Hi guys, this is Anne and welcome to my channel. This is going to be my current reads and my May TBR. It's going to be slightly unstructured video because I'm reading lots of books and I'm reading them in different formats. So I have electronic versions and book versions and I'm halfway through several of them. If you watched my video about April's TBR, remember I've said that my books have been multiplying? Well, the situation has gotten worse since. I now have more than 10 books I'm actively reading. I'm not sure I'm going to mention all of them. Some of them are hibernating, some of them have been actively pursued. So we'll just see how that goes. And second thing I have to apologize in advance for is I am struggling with migraines. I've been having the migraine on and off for about a week. So if I sound really, really weird, if I go a bit off on tangent and you can't comprehend anything I'm saying, I do apologize. It does seem to get worse, like my ability to communicate when I have a migraine. So I've been delaying recording the video, but if I don't record today and today is Sunday, then with a really busy week ahead, I'm gonna get a chance until roughly halfway from May and it's just not good. Right, so I'm going to start with the non-fiction books. I'm currently in the process of reading three non-fiction books. I'm going to be popping in and out because I have a huge pile next to me. So the first book I show is the only one I have as a physical copy and that's The Poland and Bound you have seen multiple times on my channel. My plan for April was to do 120 pages or so and I have failed miserably. I literally spent one evening reading it very early in April. I learned 20 or so pages and then it just got too much for me and I have not touched this book ever since. So I'm not going to have a huge plan regarding this book for the month of May. I'm basically not going to have any plan. If I read anything from this book that would be good. I do want to finish it in the first half of 2017 and now I'm realizing it's not gonna happen I will have to take it probably all the way till September but hey as long as I'm going through it slowly it doesn't matter it's better than not being read the two other non-fiction book I'm currently going through I have electronically on my Kindle so I have talked about one of them because it's going to be the third month I'm reading it. It's called Historically Inevitable. I'm going to pop a picture. Turning Point in the Russian Revolution edited by Tony Brenton and I'm about 40% into the book. I really really like it. I like the collection. I like the fact that different points are written by completely different authors. Some are like more, some are like less, but it does give a really good introduction to the writing style of the author. So. If you're new to the Russian history and you would like to know more, you have to get comfortable with the writing style of the author because books are generally large. And this book lets you basically pick and choose. You see whether or not this particular writer will work for you or not. So yeah, I don't think I will finish it this month, but if I can get through up to 80% of the book, that would be great. And then finally, and the other non-fiction book I have started recently, it has nothing to do with history. Well, it does kind of, but history of science. It's called What We Cannot Know by Marcus de Sautoy. Marcus de Sautoy is a mathematician. He used to be a much more prominent professor in Oxford. He is now focusing more on the public relations. So he's trying to explain science to a much more lay audience. He's really well known here in the UK. I absolutely like the way he brings very complicated concepts down and makes you interested and makes you engage rather than all of the concept going over your head. And he's also very, very British in the way he writes. It's just a pleasure to read. He's very self-critical, self-deprecating, which I guess is a British quality. He doesn't make you feel inferior to him at any rate. If he wants to make a point, he would rather make a fool out of himself than the reader. And I really do appreciate this quiet, slow style. And it's beautifully written. At the moment, I'm really, really enjoying it. And you don't need to have a lot of science knowledge to understand it. In fact, a vast majority of what I've read in the first 20% or so I already knew 
and I already taught to my GCC physics, for example. It's just a really nice way of building up the story using maths, letting people who are not necessarily into maths just appreciate the importance of mathematics behind all of the scientific discoveries throughout the Middle Ages, the prehistoric time. I don't think that many people realize just how ubiquitous maths is. And in England, there's this thing at school where people can go and say, oh, you don't understand maths, that's all right, honey. You don't have to, not everyone needs to. And I highly, highly disagree with it. Not because I teach physics, but because it develops your logical thinking. You might not become a mathematician, but you will use maths without realizing every single day of your life, every time you drive and you want to work out the stopping distances, every time you do shopping and you want to calculate how much money you have, doing your weight, counting calories, looking at the child growing up, you use maths without realizing that you actually do. And it really, really upsets me the way people diss it and say, oh, it's really hard, it's just for some. If it is hard for you, then probably you should force yourself to do it more Honestly, the GCC maths in this country, everyone can do. Everyone. Not everyone will do it on the first attempt. Some will struggle. I would say more than 75% of people will struggle. But when you go to the gym and you exercise, your muscle hurt. That's why you go to the gym. So when you go to the lesson, your brain should hurt. It's absolutely fine. When I went to America for the first time, I had a headache for like three, four months non-stop because I had to adjust all my thoughts into different language. It was just too much information. I survived. I highly recommend this book. We'll see how well it goes, but so far I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So that's as far as non-fiction goes. Right, moving on to the pile of books I have previously shown to be reading. Right, here we go. Euripides, Volume 1. I have finished Alcestis, or Alcestis, probably the way you should pronounce it, Alcestis and Medea this month. So my plan was to read two out of the four plays, and I have done it. And I have to say I absolutely love Alcestis, and I love Richmond Latimer's translation. I, I think his translation is just so beautiful and so engaging, and I found both plays extremely well translated and just wonderful and I think I might do a little bit of a wrap up when I do my April books wrap up because I wasn't sure whether to talk about the different plays separately and I think they actually they definitely deserve to be covered more I highly recommend this book it's just it's just so nice so for this month, I want to read The Children of Heracles and maybe I'll get into Hippolytus, but the plan is just to read mainly one. I'm also halfway through the Alexandria Quartet by Lawrence Durrell. I have read Justine in March and I have done Balthazar in April. I do one book a month, so for the month of May, my big plan is to complete Monteville, so the third book in a quartet. It's a four-part series. And I think I will continue on doing the reviews, individual reviews, because I've done the Justine one as the first one. And a lot of people commented under those videos saying that they found it useful, that some of them haven't heard about the book. So I will finish the series, so I will be recording separate reviews on each of the books. Therefore, Balthazar will be coming soon. And then there are two books which I have been reading in March, but did not touch in the month of April. First of them is Florian Illis, 1913, The Year Before the Storm. This is non-fiction, focusing on the artistic circles. in Mainly Austria in the year 1913 before the onset of World War One, I. I basically have not touched this book in the month of April. I don't know why. It's just I, I wasn't inclined towards it, probably because I have been busy reading other non-fiction. 
And then the other book is by Nikolai Krishuk. It's the collection of short stories published in Russian, has never been translated into English, and it's called In St. Petersburg in the summer you can survive or you can live. And I really, really enjoyed the first of the stories, which I have read in March, which is the longest out of the rest of the collection. But the short one, they just kind of did not really agree with me. So I will, well, I was supposed to give it a second chance in April, it didn't happen, but there will be a second chance in May. We'll see whether that goes. So those are the books I kind of showed you before. Now I'm going to show the books which I've mentioned previously on my channel and I've been sort of reading on and off. Okay, so without further ado, the one book which I'm literally reading as <laughs> well, as soon as I finish recording this video, I'm going to go back and read it. And this is Angela Thorkel, and it's called Pomfret Tower. So I think it's book six in her Basse series, which was highly popularized in the 1930s series. This is a sort of classical comedy of English literature of the 20th century. And obviously, Basse does remind you of Trollope. She was a fan, so she has set all of her stories in his fictional county and I picked it up in a charity shop and I'm thoroughly enjoying this. This is so good. This is so slow and sarcastic. Oh my god. Some of the things, some of the thoughts the characters have, they're just pure, pure evil. So cruel to each other. I absolutely I love this. It is it's just I cannot stop smiling and laughing when I'm going through it. I've been reading this sort of at my lunch break at school, so that's why I'm not really really <laughs> had much of a success reading it. I'm currently on page 154, so I've read the first six chapters and I've just been cackling. So all of my colleagues like what it is you're reading, like why are you just sitting there? smirking i was like well because this book is just so funny guys highly recommend it i'm also reading a little nothing by marisa silva and this is the book which came in the moth box and it is sort of fairy tale magical realism story it has surprised me at the moment i'm on page 212 so the whole book, let me just see, is 336. So I'm more, I'm about two thirds into this book. I do like it. It's really, really, really easy to read. But there was a point in this book which just completely threw me. I did not expect it whatsoever. So that it went from Folko as like a proper fairy tale, the main, from that point on. It said in the Eastern European country, which we don't know which one it is, kind of during World War One, I, I suppose, or maybe one of those wars just before World War One. It never explicitly tells you. And there are bits of this book which is just purely weird. If you like magical realism, then you would like this book. I've also done a little bit more reading on The Door by Magda Sapo. I'm currently uh, on page 57, just started page 57. I have done the first chapter of this last month for my Try Book series. I loved it. I still really, really like this book. But when you come from work and you're tired, this is not the book I kind of just reach for. This is the sort of book I reach for. This is like a sitcom. If you read this book, like, who needs a TV? This one, you need to think, you need to feel, you need to put it through you. But I, I'm, I'm still really, really enjoying it. Right, so that brings me to a set of books which I mostly have shown you on this channel, but I haven't done much reading from. So first of the, from this, this is... Eric Seagal, his book Doctors. I've just done one chapter two months ago when I did my first video of trying a book and I really liked it. And when I finished reading 
the Pomfret Towers. I think that will become a replacement, sort of for the easy read, something to grab when you're tired. Once I finish Little Nothing, I am gonna go back and read Sufficient Grace, which came in the previous month's moth box and which is also set in the woods but this is not a folk this is sort of more of a actual fiction it stayed with me that first chapter in the prologue stayed with me so i am keen to go back to this book and then i have three books on paper which are all short and i would really like to get to i would finally like to get to the vegetated by han kang it's been months, it's been just looking at me, and it looks small, and I really want to read his second one. So yeah, I need to progress. I would like to get 84 Charing Cross Road done. So many of my subscribers recommended me this book. So I would like to, it's, and it's also small, and it's done of my, in one of my favorite styles. It's done as a series of letters, and I love this writing style. So I think I will enjoy it. And then finally, I would like to give a go to Arthur Schnitzler Dream Story. And the reason behind wanting to do it is that I would like to get back to 1913. And I fell out of love with that book. So I think if I read the novel written in that time by one of the characters, because it's a non fiction, of 1913, that will be the catalyst which will propel my desire to go back and actually read 1913. This is a huge number of books. I don't fool myself, I don't think I will read all of them, but I would like to sort of give it a fair chance. And I also have so many books waiting for me on my Kindle from the Net Gali, waiting to be read. Because at the moment, my review rate on the Net Gali is 24%, which is really, really crap. There's no other way to describe it. And they recommend it to be 80 so I will probably be reading some of the books for the Net Gully as well. I don't know. I don't know how well it's going to be. Today is Sunday. It's almost, a f it's the first week of May gone. And during this whole week, the only thing I've actually physically read was this book. Because of my migraines, I literally had six days with no reading. It feels really strange. And it's not like I'm listening to the audiobooks, it's not like I'm doing anything, it's like I don't do cross-stitch, because again, you use your eyesight, and I'm going to have a migraine, I'm supposed to have a ban, I don't fancy watching TV. So I literally lay, lay there in bed like a vegetable, and think to myself, oh my god, I should be reading, I should be reading, this is so boring. But when I pick up the book, I get nauseous, it's just, it's, it's a strange, it's a strange situation. I hope none of you have migraines because they're awful they're awful and I wish anyone knew why sometimes they, they come as waves like sometimes they get really frequent and sometimes they don't and this has just not been a good month for me so far so right that's enough of the rant I am looking at the huge pile of books I have purchased in April and I need to sort them out probably gonna be split into two videos again and one of them will be the French edition. Well, there will be books in English, but about France, because early in April, we actually went to France for a couple of days for a holiday. I want to record it and then pack the books away somewhere on the shelves. So yeah, hope you really liked it. See you guys soon. Happy reading. Bye.